Okay, so this is for module 6, Inductive Learning. So at the end of the module, the students can plan a lesson that allows the students to inductively learn a concept. Okay, so what is inductive learning? So, um, before that, let us first um, recall yung inductive reasoning. If you can still remember, diba, we have the inductive and deductive reasoning. The deductive reasoning is that um, given a conclusion or given a general statement, and then after that, we will um, have some specific statements or sa case naman sa math uh, in the case of mathematics um, we have a uh, we will give a theorem first or we will state a theorem we will state a um, principle no or a general rule and then after that we will give um, examples already. So, we will do some examples. We will do some applications already. So, that is deductive. Okay? Or, or that is how we learn deductively. Um, si teacher magbibigay muna ng um, general rule, um, ng theorem. Then, after that, para um, uh, to apply the theorem, we will have some examples. So, that is why from the general statement or general rule down to specific examples or specific statement. Pero in here, this is inductive, so ibig sabihin pabaliktad. So, we will start with some examples and then after that, we will make the general rule. Okay? So, let's say for example, um, this one. So, we have this following example. So, mga examples binigay, ha? So, walang general rule, walang general statement, walang theorem na binigay. Examples kaagad. Okay. So, we have here, positive 4 times positive 5 is positive 20. Positive 3 times positive 5 is positive 15. Negative 4 times positive 5 is negative 20. Negative 3 times positive 5 is negative 15. Negative 4 times negative 5 is positive 20. Negative 3 times negative 5 is positive 15. Positive 4 times negative 5 is negative 20. Positive 3 times negative 5 is negative 15. Now, based from the examples, what is the product of two positive integers? Ito. When the two integers or the uh, when the two inter integers are positive and we multiply them, the answer is what? Based sa example natin, the the product is in positive. Okay? Positive yung sign. Positive 20 and positive 15. What is the product of a negative integer and a positive integer? Just like this one. So, kung titingnan natin, the other integer is negative and the other one is positive. When we multiply them, the answer will give us negative number or negative integer. So, in this case, negative 20 and negative 15. Then, how about here? If the two integers are negative, the product is positive. Positive 20 and positive 15. Now, based from these examples and the observations that we have, what general rule can we make? So, the general rule that we can make here is that when two integers, um, when two integers are positive, both positive or both negative, then the product will always be positive integers. So again, uh, we may, we may uh, those are specific pa konti, no? So, kung i-generalize natin, pwede natin sabihin na 
if the two integers are of both the same uh, sign, so ibig sabihin parehong positive and parehong negative, then the product is always positive. But if but if one uh, or um, if two integers are not of the same sign, meaning ang isa negative, ang isa positive, then the product is always negative integer. So, that is the general rule. So, ganun, um, ganun ang inductive, no? Inductive learning. We, we observe some examples, okay? And then, we give, after that, we give the general rules. So, how... How is this inductive learning strategy? So, inductive learning strategy is sometimes called discovery learning. Okay? Because this is based on the principle of induction. Meaning, we derive the concept by showing that if it is true to some cases, then it is true to all. Okay? Just like, um, just like this um, example here. The chair in the living room is red. If that is true, okay, so let's assume that is true. The chair in the dining room is red. Let's assume that is true. The chair in the bedroom is also red. Now, what general statement can we have? So, we can say that all the chairs, all the chairs in the house are red. So, ganyan yung discovery learning or induction. Okay? Now, what are the four processes that the students go through when given an inductive learning activity? So, the first one is observe. We let the students observe no, the, the examples. Kasi, kailangan makahanap sila ng patterns. Because usually, when we give some examples... Um, there, there are patterns, no? So, the children, the students will look for patterns and then they can also look for similarities and assume some rules. Okay. So, kagaya ng kinawa natin dito, di ba? We make some observation first and then uh, makikita natin na may mga similarities at may mga patterns. Then after that, let the students give their hypothesis or mag-hypothesize sila. So the students will form rules in their minds as they observe. So in this case, pwede nilang sabihin, pwede na sila mag-hypothesize or make a guess here na, ay, kapag pareho pala ng um, sign, ang answer ay positive. Pareho pala dito ng sign, no? So, positive pa rin yung product. So, pwede nilang gawin yun. Pwede, nilang, pwede yun ang magiging hypothesis nila or guess nila for the possible rule, general rule. Then, after that, let us collect evidence. Let them, um, sorry, let them collect evidence. Ibig sabihin, you can give more examples pa. Okay? Give them more examples para mas magiging confident sila or sigurado sila sa kanilang um, guess, uh, I mean, sa, sa rule na, na binigay nila or na, um, sa isang, um, sa kanilang hypothesis rather. So, okay? Para maging confident sila sa kanilang hypothesis or para mas magiging sigurado sila sa kanilang hypothesis. Okay, after that, they can finally formalize their hypothesis to a rule. Okay, um, since these are, these are students na um, ngayon pa lang nila malalaman or this is new to them, no? the, the concept is new to them, so you can just support the students in finalizing the rule. Okay, uh, so you will uh, introduce to them some mathematical terms for them to state uh, or for them to formalize the rule. So, let me give you an example here. 
Okay, so let's say the topic is on squaring numbers. So let them observe first. So ito yung binigay ninyong examples. So let them observe. 5 squared is equal to 25. 4 squared is equal to 16. 3 squared is equal to 9. Then let then ask them kung ano ba yung function ng 2 dito sa taas. What is the function of that? Okay. Then after that, let them hypothesize. Let them give some hypothesis or let them guess what will be the rule or what is the function of 2. So some students will recognize the pattern. So sasabihin ng iba, Oh, I know the number. Um, it means uh, the 2 here, the function of 2 here is that for the number 5 to multiply to itself, for the number 4 to multiply itself, and for number 3 to multiply itself. So yun, um, some will see that pattern. And after that, collect evidence. So you will give another set of squaring numbers. So more examples pa. Para lang mas magiging matibay, magiging matibay yung kanilang guess, okay, or yung kanilang hypothesis. Or at maging mas confident sila sa kanilang hypothesis. Then after that, okay, then after that, you can uh, you can help the students now to uh, formalize the rule gamit ang mga mathematical terms like um, the exponent. So the 2, the 2 here, the 2, the function of 2 here, okay, we call it as the exponent. At yung, the big number here, we call it as the base. So, to formalize the rule, you can say that um, the exponent or um, in squaring a number, we will multiply, we will multiply um, the base to itself according to the number in as the exponent. Okay, pwede niyong sabihin ganun that, um, or, or if since our topic is on squaring, no, squaring the number, okay, squaring the number, so ang general rule natin is on squaring the numbers lang. So, pwede natin um, sabihin that um, the general rule here is that in squaring numbers, um, we simply multiply the base to itself twice or two times. So, that is squaring a number. Okay, so that's it for your um, assignment. You are going to write a lesson plan that will allow the students to discover a rule inductively. So, you may refer to the Depth at Teacher's Guide for your topic. Okay, again, you get your topic from grade 4 to grade 6, math curriculum. Um, the, you are going to write, uh, you are going to use the 5 E's, 5 E's format in writing the lesson plan. And then, you will incorporate this one, okay, you will incorporate this process doon, isa sa, isa sa mga um, part ng 5 E's. Okay? It will depend on you kung saan nyo gustong ilagay as long as it will fit properly. Okay? So, again, itong observe, hypothesize, collect, and generalize, um, kayo nang bahala kung saan nyo ilalagay doon sa 5 E format lesson plan natin. Okay? So that's it. Thank you for watching.